Hey everyone, welcome to JLEG 3D. So some of you have probably seen my post where I said I was really excited for parametric modeling and this is the Model Y, but for those who can't wait and need this model now, let me show you how it's done. So we're obviously gonna start out with a circle because we're gonna use a either rotate or sweep tool depending on your needs. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and make that circle. We're gonna offset it because we want a slight edge there. So the grip kind of goes on top. It's like a glue on or perhaps on clips, it's up to you. So now that we have that shape, we need to sketch the side. And this is very important. Make sure you sketch an actual circle and not a spline because you cannot rotate around the spline. It's not an exact edge. So as you can see here, we have an exact dimension. And that's actually super important for working on your prod projects in CAD. So in this case, uh, we're gonna choose just go ahead and 70 degrees. That's a good enough shape for us. And then we can just verify that everything's where we want it by making this circle like a complete circle. And once you are happy with your measurements, we can go ahead and go into the tools menu and use the sweep function. And we're only gonna sweep a part of it. So we wanna leave the top sketch uh, separate because uh, otherwise we'll have to split the body later. So we do it this way and save ourselves some trouble later. So, and then another thing is we have to sweep it instead of using that sketch line, we have to sweep it on the body line. So it goes the exact distance we want it because if we cancel this and if we go back to uh, the sweep tool and hide their body, uh, and we sweep only the top part, it's actually gonna kind of extend out where it doesn't need to be. And again, we, we swept it separately because we don't want it as one body. But if you do it this way as a separate piece, it kind of follows a slightly different path there. So let's go ahead and sweep using the body, like I said in the beginning. And uh, now that we have that shape, we can start to work with the details that go on top of our texture or grip or textured grip rather. And in this case, you could have just rotated that piece, but I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that little detail. So to make the little textures, we're gonna go ahead and draw a circle here on, top, on the top plane. And then uh, it doesn't matter what size, as long as it, you think it's gonna feel good in your hand. Cause this is like, let's say it's a bike grip or something, right? And then we simply rotate it by 90 degrees and we move it out slightly just because if we were to extrude it here, it might have some complications, like if it's contacting another edge. So we move it out just a little bit, however much we want the grip to extend. Then we extrude it inside so that we can uh, make a new piece. And it's, let's choose a new body. And I'm going to show you right now what will happen if you plan ahead and when you don't. So let's go ahead and go ahead and use the pattern tool to create our texture. So let's just go ahead and start. Make sure it's a circular, not a linear. And uh, choose that center access point. Let's rotate it by, in this case, 180 degrees, not 360. We just want the half circle. And we'll probably have to extend those walls later. But let's go ahead and choose about 20 of them sounds about right and the cool thing about again having that circle instead of having a, uh, a spline is that you can actually use it as a reference so we're going to select our pattern that we just made right now and we're going to go ahead and move that axis point to the center of the circle so again use the circular pattern and rotate that down by 70 degrees like just like the line and now we can add however many grip points that we want so this kind of is starting to look like a little bit like a, like a grip or an octopus hand whatever you want to make out of this but this is also one thing i want to show you guys planning ahead makes a big deal imagine having to click all those like a hundred of those and filleting them at the same time that's going to take forever so what we do is we do the details on one in the beginning so in this case we're going to fillet it we're going to add a little indent and so basically add the details to the first one. And I know that you can't do this in every case because you don't always know. Like for me, I do rough drafts in CAD, so I don't draw it on paper. I don't always know what it's gonna look like until I just do it. And then I have to undo a bunch of times because I changed my mind. But in this case, let's say I know what I want the grip to look like, right? Just some kind of squishy grip on the bike. That's something that's soft, something that will feel nice in your hand. So that's what we're gonna do. And then to make an indent here, we can simply rotate this circle right and we subtract it from the little piece and it's really easy to make a hole there that way so once we have that we just delete it we don't need it anymore and i do sometimes like taking the long road when i do this kind of stuff because i delete the model after i subtract it but you can also do this as a one-step process if you select none when doing the subtract process but i do often keep like uh, the part that i'm subtracting as a reference material so that's why i just do it that way so i don't have to remember it but let's go ahead and fill it this piece and now we have basically this smooth little you know grip part or, or texture or whatever you want to call it and if we now follow through with our pattern you know the way that we go around it's gonna copy over to every single one of those 
instead of having you click a hundred of them later and doing this to every single one. So let's go ahead and use the pattern tool again. We're gonna rotate it and make sure it's circular. We're gonna rotate it by 180 degrees because we don't need the full circle. And then we're gonna click 20 just like last time because that, that number looked pretty good. And then we can go ahead and just use that same uh, style of design that we did last time by using the round object as a pivot point for our pattern to make sure that the pattern goes across the object evenly. Versus if you had a fillet, you would have to do this all manually. Not a fillet, but if you had a spline, you would have to do it all manually. So with this circular pattern around the circle, it makes our job so much easier. So when you can get away with it, make sure you do it this way. So now we have basically, basically our complete model. What we have to do is now union and then maybe fill it those edges if you want. I won't be showing that, that's up to you already. But I will show you that in this case, for example, we have that right on the edge there and we want to extend it. So now we just basically hide the main body and we go ahead and select that edge there on both sides and we simply push it out. And we could do the same thing on the front and I won't be showing you everything, but I'm making sure that you understand the process and how it works. So you can extend it as far as you want technically and then you can also replace face or subtract tool, however meets the needs of your project. So this is just a little way of showing you how it's done and I can't wait for parametric to come around. I know as soon as that happens, we can change a lot of the parameters. Imagine having this base design and then going in and being able to change it into so many different ways like scaling, fill it, all, all that stuff. So it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for the parametric, but I uh, hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Here at JLake 3D, our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.